Crab Nebula, which is a, a great example. And again, uh, suggest you look up the Chandra Space Telescope stuff. Uh, wonderful animations and links. I've taken those from there. I give them credit where credit is due. Absolutely fantastic science. Uh, it's amazing. Looking at this Crab Nebula, this is actually a composite image. The bluish, whitish stuff is from the Chandra X-ray Telescope. The reddish stuff is actually from the Hubble Telescope. Uh, the little dot there in the center is the neutron star itself. And there's actually a gas, sort of a hosing liner pushing out. That's actually particles that are escaping. This thing is spinning so darn fast that its uh, uh, particles are falling into its magnetic field. And uh, as particles fall into a magnetic field, they're accelerated. All stuff's given off. This is a, a view of what's actually happening in the pulsar. So the... Imagine this neutron star is spinning around. And what we have is a magnetic field. Often a magnetic field is not perfectly lined up with its uh, axis of rotation. And what's happening here, this is actually the Earth's magnetic field on steroids. Uh, if you understand Earth's magnetism, you understand what causes the aurora. It's the same kind of effect, but it's happening here in orders and orders of magnitude, faster rates with much higher magnetic fields. So these magnetic fields accelerate particles, and when these, accel these are accelerated to such high energies, they give off X-rays. They don't give off the visible light you see, say, in an aurora, and the, my analogy is not perfect, but it gives you an idea. But we're generating X-rays here. So you get a whole, you get a powerful X-ray source giving off energy, and that's because uh, of the spinning object and the magnetic field. So if you're an observer, you're gonna see periodically a beam of X-rays hitting you, and that's what causes the effect. So. Going back to our uh, this beautiful photo, again, this composite photo of the uh, Crab Nebula, you can get a sense. There's another, uh, this is out of white ring. What's actually happening there is, yes, this is the magnetic field accelerating particles. And as these particles get accelerated, they hit a gas envelope on the outside. And this is kind of like a shock wave. When these particles hit this gas, uh, they give off uh, X-rays. It's called a, a brunch. Brenstrahlong effect. Now, what I'm going to talk about is uh, black holes. Black holes uh, occur when a star collapses that's greater than five solar masses. Uh, the gravitational pressure at this point is, is so great, it overcomes the neutron degeneracy. The star really goes into oblivion. What's going on inside a black hole is, is very hard to figure out because a black hole is, um, why is it black? It's black because it doesn't give off any light. In fact, the gravitational field is so strong in a black hole that light bends on itself. If you look at Einstein's general theory of relativity, light is curved by a um, gravitational field. If the field is high enough, it can curve completely back on itself. And that's what's happening in a black hole. This is uh, a, a fascinating object, and it's governed again by uh, quantum mechanics, but we don't understand what's going on inside. But a black hole has some measurable properties. Uh, it does have a mass. It does have a spin. It can even have a charge. Of course, the charge is going to get neutralized. Given it has a mass, it's, it has a gravitational field, so it will attract objects. It will pull objects in as you can well understand. Uh, now, of course, no one has photographed a black hole, but you can certainly photograph matter around the black hole because it's being accelerated. And when the matter is accelerated, it will tend to glow. Anytime you have an electric charge being accelerated, it's going to give off electromagnetic radiation, and we can, in fact, detect that. This is an artist's conception of a, a black hole. There's actually ample proof that black holes exist. And uh, I will show you uh, an example of one very soon. This artist's conception is a black hole sucking away mass from a star that's orbiting it. And what you see that stream uh, coming up and out of the central axis is actually uh, uh, particles, uh, actually radiation that's escaping from the center. A little bit like the neutron star. Uh, some of the spin and that behavior is similar. This is an actual photograph, once again, I believe taken from the Chandra. It's an X-ray flare focused at the center of the Milky Way. In other words, uh, 
is ample evidence the center of the Milky Way has a black hole. But basically, it's, the, it's a, estimated to be a billion solar masses, just this black hole. It's what's holding our universe together. I will tell you more about black holes in a, entirely another video. It's just such fascinating subjects. I just wanted to put black holes in perspective of dwarfs and neutron stars. In fact, all of this stuff is so exciting. I can spend you know, all day, all my life talking about it. Fortunately, uh, you know, I do have other things to do. Um, let's summarize. We have white dwarfs. We have um, neutron stars and we have black holes. And what they become is really governed by its mass. So with that, I'll wrap up. Uh, and of course, this is fascinating stuff. And I'm the communicator of information in my own way. A lot of these animations and information comes from the Chandra X-ray project. Take a look at it. Fascinating stuff. Of course, thanks to the thousands of physicists and astronomers over the last um, 100 years or so that have formed quantum mechanics and have basically made measurements and have really weaved this fantastic vision of reality. And this is really the reality.